So anime was built on physical media and Crunchyroll's Funimation debacle makes it clear it's time to go back. This is from IGN. They're talking about the fact that the digital copies just got yeeted. Uh, that was what that was in reference to. I've always thrown those away as <laughs> soon as I opened, opened it up the first time. <laughs> the whole point of having these is because I want the fucking disc. So anyway, you either keep your physical media collection or live long enough to wish you had. There was a time long, long ago when North American anime fans had to use mail order catalogs to own episodes of their favorite TV series or their favorite series on VHS. In the early 90s, heavy hitters like Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon began to make their way to stores like Blockbuster or Hollywood Video or Suncoast, which is where most of those were for me. Uh, where lucky kids could rent two episodes on a tape for a small price. Actually, I think um, Dragon Ball usually had three or four. But uh, back then, though Jeez. owning an anime VHS was a costly endeavor, with fans often spending $30 or $40 for a tape at mall at mall staples like Suncoast. There it is. <laughs> Rosie Knight is a, a contemporary of the uh, anime collector here. Uh, despite that price barrier... The love for anime grew. That physical aspect of the medium is what the early days of anime fandom was built on. In 2024, the landscape has changed so dramatically that every streamer offers anime options, from Hulu to Netflix to Paramount via Pluto, their free ad-supported TV service. That means there's more access to anime than ever, but as, but as one of the foremost apps, Funimation, closes down due to its merger with Crunchyroll, creating a near monopoly on anime apps, the loss of users' digital copies of certain titles is surely making some fans nostalgic for those physical media heydays. Along with the end of the app, it was revealed that users' digital libraries of titles from the site wouldn't carry over to Crunchyroll. The uproar has been reminiscent of when Warner Brothers, Disney, and other large corporations have removed shows from streaming, essentially leading them to no longer be able uh, to them no longer being accessible at all. In the case of Funimation, there's a new wrinkle as Funimation was never a service where you could buy digital copies of anime. But when you bought Funimation branded DVDs and Blu-rays, they would come with a digital copy you could redeem on the app. It was essentially a bonus to engage audiences to commit to a physical media format in an increasingly digital focused world. It's not something that's unique to the service either, as many physical editions of movies came with digital versions that could be redeemed through apps, including Movies Anywhere, Amazon, Vudu, Google Play, and the like. What was the other one? Ultraviolet? I was just going to say, remember yeah, Ultraviolet? Ultra, remember when we covered Ultraviolet also yeeting your entire collection of movies that you thought you could throw away after you bought them? But in Funimation's case, it wasn't that simple. The reality was that it just meant users were able to stream that film or series online without a premium subscription to the service. It was never a perfect service, but it is once again a great reminder that under the current system of streaming and digital uh, of streaming and digital media that we have, ownership of any digital content is a deceptively loose concept. Luckily, though, we're far from the days of forty dollars VHS tapes on the wall of Suncoast. Yeah, we're out. We're in the days of one hundred and twenty dollars premium editions from Sentai. <laughs> Thanks to the massive popularity and huge influence of anime. We can walk into a big box store and buy the latest Makoto Shinkai film while picking up our groceries. Really? Maybe at Target. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, thanks to distributors like G Kids, it's now just easy to find copies of incredible films from the catalogs of Studio Ghibli for a relatively reasonable price, unlike the often hard to find and always high cost, now defunct Disney license as it is to buy a DreamWorks film. Wow, what a fucking unbelievable way of uh, breaking up that sentence. Um, so thanks to distributors like G-Kids, it's now just as easy to find copies of incredible films from the catalogs of Studio Ghibli for a relatively reasonable price as it is to buy a DreamWorks film. That ease of access makes it a great time for anime lovers to begin to build their own physical media collection. After all, 
What do us passionate fans love more than collecting the things that we love? From statues and collectibles to manga, we are already lovers of being surrounded by our fandoms. Why shouldn't that extend to the series and films that inspire them too? And as has been pointed out by many smart people, including my colleague Amelia Emberwing, if you buy a physical version of your favorite show, a studio or its representatives can't come to your house and take it out of your hands just because they no longer want that version or that content to be out in the world. Mm-hmm. Plus, That's what you think. Plus, just with Crunchyroll, five years. <laughs> plus, with Crunchyroll <laughs> following the industry trend of drastically raising prices post-merger, there's even more reason to look towards owning the anime that you love. I think, I think that's a kind of a drastically raising the prices. We covered that because they mm. only raised the prices on the ones where grand, grandfathered in at the lower price. That's kind of a misleading statement. I mean, you can think it's misleading, but technically it is true, to, uh, it, even though it only applies to a smaller, you know. Well, they, they got a discount it. because yeah, it. it it's not even grandfathered in. It was they were offered a a discount for switching, mm-hmm. and now they don't have that discount anymore. Um, but um, also, like you know, they are going to raise the price, just oh, yeah. like every other fucking stream. Well, they they so have to. Like uh, inflation is literally just out of control right now. Like at, at a certain point, it, you you understand they have to raise uh, prices in order to stay in business. So I have Crunchyroll's premium plan. Mm-hmm. Like the, the highest tier, 15 bucks a month. Now, the reason I went for that is the 15% Crunchyroll store discount. Mm-hmm. It pays for itself eventually. And also the free shipping, no, no matter how big of the order, it could be a $2 uh, clearance item, free shipping. That's not bad. Right? I, like, if you just live like, in the just States. Like, just like with when you have Amazon Prime and Amazon yeah, is yeah. literally down the street. Yeah, honestly, Amazon I think Amazon's um cost of Prime is getting outrageous, you know, compared to like I'll pay right stuff um for the Got Anime membership every year. I know yeah, I, for a fact. Yeah, I mean, it does not take a month before it's that paid for itself, itself you know? in like its first two orders because it was only oh, seventeen it, bucks a year. With Amazon, it they're now going to be um, so Amazon used to give you Amazon Music for free and Amazon Video for free or Prime Video, whatever. Um, if you had Prime, and then they were like, "Well, no, now if you want." Amazon Music, you have to buy a separate service for Amazon Music. That was a, mm-hmm. that was a few years ago, um, and now they're they're starting to do that with Prime Video too, right? Now they're introducing commercials, yeah, and you have to buy an extra service like to not get commercials, for yeah, iPhone. in your in your Prime Video, yeah, true. So. Um, one of the things that people often complain about when it comes to streaming is that you don't get the extensive special features and extras that became standard with DVDs. No. Though older anime releases were sparse, things with the um... <laughs> new anime releases are sparse. Okay. Though older anime releases were sparse things with the episodes and not much else, that's all changing. Thanks to specialist distributor, distributors like Shout Factory and Sentai Filmworks, as well as companies like Viz and Crunchyroll, not only can you get special editions of anime with extra content, like stickers! Like, <laughs> act like it matters. Um, but you can also get box sets of brilliant filmmakers' collected works for entire series in one collection. Then there's the fact that thanks to the joys of the free market, the more you support the marketplace, the more choices you'll have. The reason that we have so much great anime is because the demand is there. And by purchasing physical anime, you'll let the companies that make it know that your favorite series or film is more than just a potential background watch on streaming. Anyway. So um, I'd like to add to the fact that we barely get 
special features anymore with mm-hmm. our shit. My dress up darling actually was an exception in a, quite a while that I saw had special features. That had like a pet voice actor panel or something, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, if you think about how many shows Funimation slash Crunchyroll is just jamming out, it kind of makes sense. They can't do a special feature for all of them. Yeah. Like, they completely dropped Right, but they did considerable. I mean, they used to do a considerable amount, like, back in the day. They would at least do maybe two commentaries or, what, at least one commentary episode per set. You know, not to mention the fact that a lot of these places, their business model of subscription, part of it is that they know there will be people who sign on to the service and forget about it. And they will they will live off of those people spending 10, 20 bucks a month every month for years without even realizing they're paying for it. Old man says, the thing I hate most about everything going digital is shows disappearing, only being available on certain platforms or being altered for a modern audience like Disney censoring movies last year. Yeah. Years later. Sorry. The the worst is the fucking like shows like Amazing or uh, the Spider Man, the animated Mm -hmm. series, who have yet to get a DVD release Mm -hmm. are on streaming. And it's like, would it? Out on physical media, I want to buy it. I don't want you changing this fucking shit in five years. Mm-hmm. I want a hard version, and they won't do it. And it's, I don't know. Did, did X Men get a, a physical yes. release? It did. Right? I don't know why X Men did, but mm-hmm. and and Spider Man didn't, but like, but it's only on it's only X-Men on DVD, did. right? It's not on Blu-ray. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. it's just a, like so the, the Blu-ray will come out is a in the combo pack with X Men '97. And that's how they're going to say X-Men 97 was a success because people <laughs> bought the Blu-ray for the original, right? That just It's like when uh, Ghostbusters 2016 was included on the thing as a digital download. <laughs> with the rest oh, of yeah, the... for the for the uh, Ghostbusters like mega combo. Yeah, thing. I, had a, I had a picture. Of, I never ended up incorporating it in the podcast because it just wasn't a reason to bring it up. But it was that scene from uh, Family Guy. Where um, the guy, when he buys something at like Blockbuster, and the guy is like, Congratulations, you get a free something or other. And he goes, If that even so much as touches this bad, I will murder you. <laughs> the idea of Disney not doing that for Spider Man is so fucking stupid because the people who refuse to pay for the subscriptions are the ones who buy the physical stuff. Mm-hmm. And there's literally more money for them from people they're not getting money from yeah. in the first place. Well, I, I, think that, they... I think that Disney's model for their company has been built around the vault and holding stuff for ransom and stuff. So they look at it as, well, sorry, you're going to have to start using this thing we want you to use. And they're, they're thinking like, well, yeah, we probably could make some money by selling it on on disc, but if we hold off as much as possible on that, we can force more people. Like more and more people are going to eventually give up and get a subscription to Disney Plus. And their game is if we can get enough people to do that, and eventually, you know, if we just don't release anything on disc, then eventually people are going to have to. Uh, go to this route for their entertainment, you know, and then we're going to make money off of them every month for years. Because you know? they eventually, or not eventually, they recently sold a um like a mega ultra thousand dollar collection that had like a bunch of shorts, all the films, mm-hmm. like most of their stuff that was animated, and mm-hmm. it, but it was like you had to pay like an arm. A hundred years of Disney. Yeah. 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 I thought about getting it, but then I saw the price. And I'm like, nah, <laughs> not worth. That was an easy no. <laughs> yeah. right. Didn't we cover? Didn't we cover that? Did we actually look at that on podcast? I can't remember. I think we, we might, might have. have.